Okay, I am back. This is our third take. So uh, if you tuned in earlier and you are a part of the live stream of this uh, uh, cooking the during the 12 days of candy making with Mitch Bailey, well, this is take number three due to a uh, smoke alarm or a, that is not wanting to cooperate. So hopefully this take three will be successful. Uh, I've saved these, so if this, if I become some kind of TV sensation in regards to cooking, all jokes aside, I'll have at least some bloopers to be able to share. So, uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and start with our day one of can Christmas candy making, and we are making cracker candy today. And uh, during the live uh, feed, I went over all the ingredients, but I'm gonna take a little bit of time. And for those of you that are just tuning in, uh, I'm gonna go over these uh, ingredients with you so that you'll know what we're, what you'll need for this particular recipe. I'll post the recipe on my uh, Facebook page. Like I said earlier, it's Mitch Bailey's Recipe for Success. If you go over on the Facebook, uh, you'll be able to find that. Just follow me there and like, uh, that page and you'll be able to get feeds for, uh, from me in regards to recipes that I share on Facebook and social media. So um, uh, let's just jump into this and take you through the ingredients. You'll need two sticks of butter. I have my butter cubed so that it is easier to melt. Um, and what this equates to is one cup. So two sticks of cubed butter. Um, you can use salted or unsalted butter. Uh, I use salted butter, but those of you that are watching your salt, you can use unsalted butter for this as well. The only thing about the difference between salted and unsalted butter is that salted butter contains the salt already and unsalted does not. So those of you that are wanting to either cut back on your salt or add salt to your recipes, you can uh, determine what kind of butter that you wanna use. You will need one bag of semi-sweet chocolate chips. I'm using the minis here because they melt uh, faster. And I was doing the minis because of tonight's video. It cuts down on some of the time of melting the chocolate. Um, you'll need one cup of packed brown sugar. Uh, remember to pack it. And as you can see, I've already packed mine and placed it in the bowl. And you will need one sleeve of saltine crackers. Now, one sleeve of saltine crackers will cover a 10 by uh, 13 cookie sheet. And on the cookie sheet, I have already covered the cookie sheet with aluminum foil. That's very important. And sprayed it before placing crackers down with a cooking spray. So that cooking spray is very important in regards to the success of this candy. Another optional item that you have is pecans or pecans, however you want to say it. And I have these in an iron skillet. And the reason I put them in an iron skillet is I want it, to, I store my, my nuts in the refrigerator. And by storing them in the refrigerator, the oils in the nuts will be uh, more solidified, but the nuts will be uh, last you longer in regards to shelf life. So you can get twice the shelf life if you were storing this in your pantry versus your refrigerator. But if you place them in an iron skillet or any type of skillet that you have at your house and just put them on low to medium heat, but watch them because don't let them scorch. And then that way it revitalizes the oil in the, in the nut and it gives it a better flavor in regards to using it in your recipes. So that's basically the ingredients that you will need to complete the cracker candy recipe. Now, behind me is my oven, and I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees. So we will be placing this in the oven for short, a short period of time, but the majority of this will be um, prepared on the stove top in a saucepan. So let's just go ahead and walk on over here to the, to the saucepan, and we'll get started in regards to getting everything in our pan so that we will be able to complete the syrup part of this recipe. Uh, let me get my butter. I have my stove and my saucepan. Let me just let you see what this looks like here. I have just a saucepan, any size saucepan. This is not going to be a lot of liquid. This is a medium sized saucepan. So if you've got a small one, 
uh, it'll be working fine as well. So I've got this on medium heat. So I'm just gonna add my butter to my saucepan and I'll let you see what it's looking like. As you can see here, just put it in your saucepan and it'll start melting. Now, as soon as this butter is all melted, you're going to add your brown sugar. Now, this recipe doesn't take a long time to uh, make. You're not going to need a candy thermometer or anything in regards to this recipe. The only thing that you're going to need is kind of a watchful eye. So, um, once the butter is all melted, we're going to add the brown sugar in and we're going to let that brown sugar dissolve and we're going to let that dissolve and it'll come to a bubble and that bubble usually will light, it will come up in about three to five minutes according to how your stove. Now, if you're cooking with gas heat, I find that if you're cooking with gas heat, uh, things heat up quicker, but if you're doing electric uh, heat with your stove top, it's going to take a little bit longer. So anywhere from three to five minutes will be the time. And one of the things that I do in regards to kind of prepping for these videos is I have everything turned on so my stove, my stove top is already, the element is already heating up. So as you can see, let me just let you look over here in the pan, the saucepan. As you can see, my butter is already melted. I had my element already on. Uh, it's on around, if you're, normally it's about a seven is medium heat. Just uh, a lot of people will put butter in, in a saucepan to make candy and put it on high. And when that occurs, you're melting that butter really fast and butter will scorch. And when butter scorches, it burns and it has a terrible taste. So make sure that you take a little time, a little patience in regards to um, melting your butter. So let me just bring you back over here. And as you can see, my butter, my butter is already starting to, is already melted here. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the brown sugar. I'm gonna bring you over here and let you see the, the actual brown sugar. So it's better to look at than me. You can hear me talking. But as you can see, I'm just taking that packed cup of packed brown sugar and, and getting it all dissolved in there. And uh, I've already placed my saltine crackers. I showed you that earlier. I already put the saltine crackers on the cookie sheet. We'll go ahead and let that do its magic. That's just a little waiting game. So I'll turn back here and Normally what I was had would do right now, if this was not a pre-recorded session, is I would look at the feeds and be able to take some questions from you. So, uh, and answer those as this mixture is getting hot. What I always try to do is I always keep my eye on this mixture because when you're dealing with candy, it can, it can scorch or burn quickly without you even knowing it. But normally this is about three to five minutes and I've got a cl clock on my oven over here and I always kind of look at that clock to determine um, my time. So, but you'll know when this mixture is ready because what will happen is your butter will completely uh, kind of lose its uh, sheen and you will have more of a brown caramel looking uh, mixture. And it will start to thicken up. It, it'll be almost like a, a bubbly mixture. So we've been on the stove here for about uh, a minute and a half. Let me just let you look to see what's going on in the, in the pot. See, as you can see, that mixture is starting to bubble and it's starting, the butter is losing all of its clarity and clarification and it's getting more of a mixture that is in, almost like a caramel.
And you're not going to cook this uh, like we did the for the uh, peanut butter roast syrup uh, to a certain temperature. We're just going to cook it for about three to five minutes. And I will tell you that this mixture is when you see it looking like this and you have no more of the clarification of the butter and it looks more of a caramel, it is almost finished. And as you can see, this is, um, this is like a fluffy, syrupy caramel that you have. So we have been on here for approximately about three minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off the stove. And a lot of people don't realize that when you're making anything, when you take it off the stove, it's still cooking because that saucepan is still hot. So we're gonna take this mixture over, back over to our crackers that we have on our uh, cookie sheet. And let me get you down here so that you can see what's going on. As you can see, here's the crackers. Remember, cover it with aluminum foil. Make sure that you spray it well with your cooking spray because that product has to get out of this pan. And if you can't get it out of the pan, you're not gonna be able to enjoy it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour this mixture and cover my crackers. And just do this slowly. Make sure all your crackers get covered. See, it's almost like a caramel. Now, you're gonna think that this is probably one of the, this candy is not gonna be any good. But what you made there is basically a caramel. Now, if you were doing a caramel, uh, you would add a few more ingredients like whipping uh, heavy cream and some vanilla and some soda in there to be able to uh, get an actual good caramel to be able to eat. So as you can see, I have, I'm gonna take an offset spatula and I am going to cover, get sure, make sure that all that mixture covers these crackers because you may think, you may think, well, this is gonna taste terrible. This is just a cracker and it's just got a brown syrup and butter cooked on top of it. But let me say, after you get the finished product, kids love this candy. And it's an old fashioned recipe because a lot of the old fashioned recipes, uh, people didn't have a lot of ingredients. So uh, if you don't have a lot of ingredients, you can still make some great stuff and it'd be really tasty on a limited budget because I'll just say this, things th this day and time are extremely expensive. So let me just show you what that looks like. See, it's all covered. So we're gonna put this mixture, this into the oven. Remember I said to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Now this is gonna stay in the oven for about five, eight to 10 minutes or until the mixture, the, the, the caramel syrup on top starts to bubble. So I've already got my oven on here and I'm gonna set a timer for five minutes. And I'm gonna come back over here and talk to you while this is beginning to bubble and get hot in the oven. Get my camera set up here. Um, now, this is, uh, we're doing the 12 days of candy making, uh, but if you go over to my Facebook page and follow me, Mitch Bailey's Recipe for Success, you will find other recipes. There's going to be other things that are going to be on there. So there's not, on, not only candy, but you'll find other recipes as well. Uh, it, this is a recipe that you can make anytime. You don't have to make it during the Christmas or the holiday season. It's a uh, candy that you can make and enjoy any time of the year. But I've got a little surprise for you tonight. Like I said earlier, your pecans or your nuts, whatever nut that you want to place on top of your candy um, is going to be your choice. So if you want almonds or peanuts, I've just got pecans and I'm going to put pecans on, on these tonight. But I'm also going to a lot of individuals will say, well, I don't like nuts. And they will have people in your home uh, or family members or kids, they'll say, well, I don't like nuts. You can leave the nuts off. But another thing that you can do is you can make this recipe 
a seasonal recipe. You can make it into a Christmas recipe. So we're going to, I don't know if you remember this old fashioned candy, it's been out for years. It's called Snow Caps. It's actually just a little semi-sweet chocolate um, chip. Uh, and it's covered with like a little white um, sprinkle of little uh, sprinkles. So we're going to put this on half of our finished product tonight. And we're going to put half with nuts. So we'll have it a little festive. And But if you just want to put snow caps on, you're going to be able to do either or. You can just cover it completely with, with nuts that you have. Or, or you can completely do it without any nuts. It's, it's your choice. But I just wanted to share that with you. Let's go over here and take a peek into the oven and see what's going on. It hasn't started to bubble yet, so we'll give it a few more. Remember I said it, based on your oven, it should be around 350. I always set it on 350. This is a low temp melt. All you're doing is getting that mixture and those crackers to be able to bake with that mixture on top of it because when we get it out, we're going to actually put the uh, semi-sweet chocolate chips on top of it and melt them. That mixture will actually melt those chips. So uh, let me just take another peek to see what's going on. We're getting there. It's not bubbled yet. Um, Normally what I would do during this time is I would be looking at my feeds and answer some questions that you have in reference to this recipe or the recipes that we've done that will be coming up. Uh, let me just kind of share some things with you that's gonna be on the uh, Mitch Bailey's Recipe for Success Facebook page and YouTube channel. Uh, what you're going to find there is you're going to find the recipes that we do that I'm going to be doing during the 12 days of Christmas candy making but you'll also be finding some recipes that are just old-fashioned recipes that's been handed down um, and things that I've actually put together myself. Sometimes you can go to your pantry and go in there and find things and make some great things and you think, well, this turned out great. I'm gonna to continue to make this. So that's how recipes are created. Somebody has to come up with the thoughts and the ideas and put them down and, and test them out and see how they work. Um, the uh, Facebook page is called Mitch Bailey's Recipe for Success. And the reason I named it a Recipe for Success is that any recipe that you make will be a success, but you're the first ingredient in any recipe success. So don't be intimidated about getting into the kitchen and um, trying recipes. You can, all, practice makes perfect. And let's see, my oven's going off, it's five minutes. Let's just go ahead and check. I try to set timers for everything. So that's not the smoke alarm, that is the oven alarm. So let me just kind of let you peek in the oven here and let you see what's going on. Like I said, that mixture on top will bubble. So let me go, st stick the camera in here and let you see what's going on. See the mixture, it is actually starting to bubble. And those crackers are actually absorbing that mixture. So we're almost finished. I'm gonna walk over here and get a um, trivet so I can set this hot. Uh, well, that was a good shot. That was a close one, wasn't it? I'm going to uh, put this cookie sheet that I'm getting out of the oven uh, on a trivet so it won't burn the countertops here. I'm pretty sure that it, these granite counter, countertops would take the heat, but you never can tell. Let me go over here and get a mitt because I will tell you this, my hand will not take that heat for sure. So let me go ahead and get the mixture out here and bring it over here so that you can see it. Let you kind of look at see what you got here. And as you can see here, the mixture is all bubbly and what we're gonna do now is we're going to take these semi-sweet chocolate chips and we're gonna spread it all over this top of these crackers and this 
caramel mixture. And that, I'm gonna take an offset spatula and I'm just gonna push those around. As you can see, that mixture has already started melting those chocolate chips. And as you, and you're probably saying, okay, I see now why you got the miniature semi-chocolate chips. They melt much faster. And you're just going to spread this around here. And that cracker mixture is going to just, you're just going to get it completely covered. This just takes a little time. So don't rush. One of the things people do is they rush when they're making candy. And when you rush, you get, you tend to make a mistake, but just be patient. Always take time. Cooking is, and candy making is therapeutic for me. So this mixture is going to, it's almost like a chocolate icing that you're making. And it's covering, as you can see, my entire top is almost covered. And you're just gonna spread it around. I find that this little offset spatula is one of the best tools in regards to doing this. But if you don't have an offset spatula, guess what I would get out of my uh, utility drawer, or my spoon or fork drawer. I'd just get a spoon. Spoons are some of the greatest little tools in order to spread uh, anything, peanut butter, and I always take and put a pretty little whipsy site design on top. Add a little bit of creativity to the top of it, but you don't have to. And as you can see here, this mixture is completely covered. All the, I mean, the mixture has complete, completely been covered and the crackers are being completely covered by the chocolate and as a result, you did not have to melt that chocolate at all. That hot mixture actually took care of that for you. So, um, get you back here so that you can see me. Now, let me tell you what you'll need to do in regards to um, the pecans. Now, as you can see, I've got my pecans over here. So, I'm going to put half of the pecans on top of the mixture. Now you're wanting to do this while the mixture is still, the chocolate is still um, a little bit uh, in liquid form, still hot. So I'm only gonna put about half. Now in the recipe I've got on here, use a cup. You don't have to use a cup. Uh, you can put it on as light as you want or you can put it on as heavy as you want. Some people, the more the merrier, the more they, they like a lot of nuts. I'm not an individual that's crazy about nuts. So um, I don't put a lot on. Now, uh, I'm only gonna put it on half of these, as you can see here. I've only covered half of the mixture with the pecans or pecans, however you wanna say it. But I will say this, if you don't heat up your nuts and you've never tried that do because you will see a big difference in regards to the flavors in your nuts that you use if you're a nut a person that likes nuts now a lot of people will put that on there just like that what i always do is i want the, that peak those nuts to be able to kind of set in that candy so when this candy is finished i can um those nuts won't fall off so one of the things that I always try to do is I just cut, I would probably rinse off that offset spatula, but to save times, so I'm gonna just get a butter knife and actually press down on those nuts so that they actually sit in that chocolate. 
That way they are set so when that chocolate gets completely hard, it is going to be set in there. So when you break this candy up, it will the nuts won't fall off. So I've tapped it down in there. Hope everyone gets to, can see that. So like I said, I'm going to do a little create, put some creativity on these tonight. And I am going to use the um, little snow cap candies that I have here um, on the other side. So I just thought today is an, uh, a snowy day. We got snow this morning. And the thing about these little snow caps is they're chocolate as well. So they're going to make this even more chocolatey. And it's also going to have a little bit of color added to it to resemble more of a holiday type candy. And I'll show you what the end product looks like here in just a few minutes, in a few seconds here. Now, I use the whole box because guess what? It's not gonna hurt. The more chocolate, it's your recipe. If you like less chocolate, do less chocolate. If you like more chocolate, put more on there. If you've got two boxes, put two boxes. And here's what your product's gonna look like. Half of it's got pecans, and half of it's got the little uh, Pirelles on there, the little snow caps. I'll let you see what that, and that's your product. So what you're going to do, that's your finished product. You're going to let this set up and you're going to either put it in the refrigerator. I always put mine in the refrigerator and let it set for at least an hour. Uh, I will also say this, most of the time I fix candy at night, put it in the refrigerator and refrigerate it, refrigerate it overnight because it just turns out much better. It will slice better for you and it'll give you a, and it gives an opportunity for all of those ingredients to, um, solidify in there and be able to be um, a better quality of a taste. Uh, anything that sits for a while and marinates, if you're marinating anything, it's uh, it's going to taste better. And that's the same thing that you've got with your candies as well. Now this is not as hot anymore. I can basically pick it up. So I'm going to show you what the product actually looks like. And that's it. So now that candy is not going to stay like that. Now, I'm not gonna stay on here for an hour and let you see what this looks like after it's been refrigerated. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the refrigerator. And uh, what you will do afterwards is you will take this candy and you will actually break it up into pieces, almost like peanut butter brittle. If you've ever had peanut butter brittle, you're just gonna take a knife, you're gonna take this out of your pan. That's why you use the aluminum foil to easily lift it up out of the cookie sheet. You're gonna place it on your countertop, just take a knife and you'll be able to cut it in any kind of shape that you want. Um, now you're going to make it look like uh, peanut butter brittle, if you've had peanut butter brittle. And then you can put it in a pretty uh, Christmas decorative container and you can take it and let your family enjoy it. And it usually will last for several days in the refrigerator or, an, uh, or a container that is uh, airtight. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video and I can't wait to see your first day of candy making cracker candy uh, pictures on my Facebook page. Remember to go over to Mitch Bailey's Recipe for Success and like this video and follow me so that you'll be able to do to see these recipes as I'm doing additional recipes during the 12 days of candy making. Uh, like I said earlier, um, the next video will uh, that I'll be doing live will be Thursday night. Uh, no, tonight is Tuesday night. Yes, it will be Thursday night and we'll be doing a two-part video because some of the recipes that we'll be making during this 12 days of candy making will uh, require a two-step process. So some of the more difficult ones, but we'll do. I will do a pre-recorded session to kind of get you set and those of you that want to follow along and cook along with me and make the candies in your own kitchens, you'll be able to do that as well. Uh, 
I will put the actual recipe for the cracker candy up on um, uh, Mitch Bailey's recipe for success so that you can go over there and print that recipe out for you and add it to your ingredients, I mean your recipe box. You all have a great night and uh, I do once again apologize for the blooper of, this, of the fire alarm. You all take care and be safe.